Hey guys, it is your creepy makeup artist friend Cat Sketch to bring you another makeup transformation. Today I thought we would turn into one of the most popular and my favorite YouTubers, Bailey Sarian. So you can subscribe for more videos like this. We do two videos a week every Monday and Friday here on this channel. Not only telling creepy, scary, ghostly stories, but also talking about interesting things while doing body paintings, beauty makeups, and effects videos. So stay tuned for more. Now, while I am trying to turn into Bailey Sarian herself, if you don't know who she is, she does Makeup Murder Mondays here on YouTube, talking about murder stories while doing her makeup. Her videos are exquisite. So let's see if we can turn into her today. I already did my hair parted down the middle in a little like bump it of a lot of teasing because I've got thinner hair. And we're gonna talk about some of the creepiest unsolved mystery TV show episodes today. I'm all hoping to look like Bailey Sarian soon. I am using the Mint Melt Primer to get our face all prepped. And one of the top creepiest episodes of Murder Mystery was Dial A for Abduction in Season 4, Episode 16. Ooh, a fresh glue stick. It was based on the night of April 4th, 1991. 20 year old Angela Hammond disappeared from Clinton, Missouri while talking to her boyfriend Rob Schaefer from a payphone. Yes, in the 90s, we did not have cell phones. We had to go to a public booth that had a telephone called a payphone in it. How do I know this? I'm ancient and I have to delete my eyebrows because I do not have the exquisite shaped brow that Miss Bailey Sarian has, so I have to create my own. She described a suspicious green pickup truck circling her as she was talking on this payphone with her boyfriend. The pickup truck even stopped next to her and she screamed before she dropped the phone. The boyfriend Schaefer jumped into his car and started driving towards where she supposedly was the payphone and saw the green pickup truck on his way there and decided to pursue it. He slammed his car in reverse and at the same time blew his transmission. At the time the police suspected him of the whole incident with his girlfriend but he was released when witnesses came out describing the same green truck that he had described at the scene. And at the time, as the episode goes, it is known that this disappearance of his girlfriend was also linked to two other Missouri missing people's cases. Two other linked, still unsolved abductions. It just so happens that when he heard her and he was so like frightened for her and decided to try to save his girlfriend, he saw the person abducting her in action and saw like the whole thing and her being whisked off and abducted. And Angela is never seen again. Random crimes seem to be the most scariest when the people know that they're doing everything right. I feel so bad for the boyfriend because he tried everything in his power to help save his girlfriend. And on top of that, she's not engaging in any risky behavior when her abduction occurs. She's just talking to her boyfriend on the phone. She even described the creepy guy in the truck apparently to her boyfriend and like his creepy green truck with his windows. By the way, this sponge is everything. Not sponsored, but this is the super sponge. It's amazing, it's one of my new favorites and it's so easy to clean and use less product. Again, not an infomercial, but this is my, well, my second or third time using it and I absolutely love it. And they still could not find the creepy guy in his truck or Angela so many years later. That boyfriend has to feel terrible. I know I look terrifying right now with no eyebrows, but I promise you I'm gonna try my best to draw new ones to look like Bailey. So this next one is from season three, episode one called The Unknown Arsonist on Unsolved Mysteries. In 1989, a father and son find a mysterious videotape inside of a camouflage jacket. 
that was abandoned on the side of the road in Stockton, California. When they took it home to watch it, they saw footage of a burning house. And on top of it, the person that was filming this whole entire videotape, he was narrating his arsons, like happy about his accomplishments in the video of the burning home. He was almost describing the burning home and what was happening as a painting, like this is hell, he explained. Look at the flames, he said, listen to the coyotes yell. When the police investigated where the father and son had found this tape near the site, they found a ceramic skull. Bailey has the cutest chin and I'm trying to replicate it and it's so hard. I should probably put concealer over my lips because we're gonna draw on totally new lips. And for some reason when they found the ceramic skull, they automatically assumed it had to deal with satanic worshiping when this episode aired, viewers said that the fires had happened in 1988 in Redwood City, about 80 miles from Stockton, where they found all this evidence of the tape and the ceramic skull. And the cops eventually arrested two troubled teens for this crime. And from airing this episode, they actually solved this crime and it was like two of these teens, but they couldn't like air anything more about the teens because they were underage. And as far as they know, it wasn't tied to anything else other than these two teens, they said. I look so terrifyingly weird right now, but I'm hoping for the best. It's a process, we gotta trust it. <laughs> so this next Unsolved Mysteries episode is season one, episode five, called Friends to the End. It's about two teens named Kevin Ives and Don Henry. Why does Don Henry sound like an exquisite, expensive alcoholic beverage? Anyways, they went hunting one night in Bryant, Arkansas, only to be run over by a cargo train during their hunting excursion. How terrifying. So why is this on Unsolved Mysteries? At first in 1987, these deaths seemed or were deemed as being suicide. The medical examiner said at the time they had smoked at least 20 joints and then went into a drug-induced coma and then laid by the tracks. And it wasn't until later on when one of the boy's family members got the case reopened because they found, you know, it wasn't just the joints of marijuana they smoked, but before this all happened, they found that one of the boys had stab wounds on him before he even laid on the tracks. I'm just getting my dip brow and going in with more finer detail because for some reason the brows are looking way too ashy right now and we need Queen Bailey Sarian to slay as she always does. And not only that was one of the boys had a stab wound but the other one had a blow to the head when the train had hit his body like before. Additionally a green tarp had even been placed over the bodies. And it was said that this was to make sure that the train engineer couldn't spot them and to hide them. Almost like camouflage. So that this train engineer would not stop. And this, or these facts and findings, made it so that the case was turned into a, from a suicide to a murder case. But it was closed in the year 1995 with no arrests made. They never find out, found out who did this. Some of the locals in town think that the boys had found or like walked into some sort of meth, drug induced like drug ring thing and that the police may be involved in it. But these are just locals talking. That's why it would explain the shady investigation not undermining locals, but you know, it's just so hard and so sad. It almost seems like this was a case of the boys being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's just so heartbreaking. And the fact that they just ruled it an accident that was a murder at the same time, it's just like these poor boys' families, you know? Now, I know I am known on YouTube for having heart-shaped lips, but I think Bailey Sarian has the most interesting, coolest shaped lips on YouTube. I definitely have to overline my upper lip, and I'm just 
outlining them as well with the darker brown and not only that but there was a local WWF wrestler named Billy Jack Haynes who claimed in 2018 that at the night that those boys were killed and found on the tracks a local politician had intercepted a drug deal so for the eye look, I saw this stunning blue eye look on Bailey that I really wanted to recreate. And I'm going to be using this Retro Paradise Elf palette. This color is called Sip Sip in this blue shimmery shade. While we talk about season 3, episode 18 on a one called Scared to Death. Two weeks after disappearing in 1989, Cindy James had been found dead near an abandoned house with her arms and legs bound behind her body. Before I continue, this is gonna bug me, but I need to cover some more of my original brow hairs with some matte white highlighting powder. This is from Lunatic Cosmetic Labs. I love this for celebrity or any type of person transformation because it has cool and warm tone highlighter and contours that are all matte so we can even Put this on Bailey's nose right here and in the center. We could like buff in some more of like this highlight color. And right here, since her mouth is like one of, in my opinion, one of her most prominent features. And I'm definitely gonna put a fake piercing here. Now back to the blues in the story, the blue eyeshadow in the story. The autopsies of her body revealed that it was a morphine overdose and they ruled it a suicide. And that would be bizarre enough, but James, she had been reported as to being harassed by someone for over seven years before the incident of them finding her body. And she was also att physically attacked before throughout these seven years by the assailant. She received threatening phone calls and notes, discovered dead cats on her property. Her phone wires had been cut. Her house had nearly been burned down by this assailant. She had been assaulted five times and one time in her home. And not only that, if it couldn't get worse, she had been stabbed in the hand before with a paring knife. One time she was battered and found being enduring hypothermia in a ditch on the side of the road that police even dusted for footprints. And the police that dusted and searched her home entirely for evidence and everywhere deemed her to have made it all up. Like what? Really? The hypothermia? Like what being stabbed? She stabbed herself, you think? I don't know. One doctor even said that she had split personalities and one was her and one was the murderer that she was tormented for seven years and ended up dead. And it's really hard to imagine that she would drug herself and on top of that hogtie herself where they found her body. But they think this was an accident or that the multiple personalities could be just a theory. Where would they get this theory though? But there was a private investigator that had worked with her for years and still to this day believes that she was not faking it. She didn't have multi personalities that she was being tortured, like stalked and assaulted. Because imagine inflicting that kind of pain on yourself, like for seven years. It's hard to believe. I'm using my favorite highlighter. This is Flexitarian by ColourPop. As you see, I've hit pan. I have multiples of these. But I am going to put on the fake you know, piercing with just a jewel and some lashes and I will be back with our final look. And just like that, we are done. Hi guys, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian. Shana sha, shana sha, shana sha, shana sha, shana sha. That is our complete look turning into Bailey Sarian. This was so incredibly hard. It's so hard turning into someone else who's like celebrity-like status, influencer face, without messing it up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I have on the lashes from Dollar Lash Club. If you haven't heard of Bailey Sarian, where have you been? Definitely check her out. Bailey Sarian is an awesome YouTuber. She gives me more Tisha Adam vibes. I love her channel so much. Leave a comment on what other person, character from movies, TV shows, whatever you want me to do a video on. 
and if I pick your comment, I will definitely shout you out. Thank you again so much for watching and supporting. We do videos every Monday and Friday here, so stay tuned for some more. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the creepy tales. We have more to come. Thank you all for watching. Bye.